Good morning everyone. So uh, bright and early this morning. It's just after six o'clock and we're out looking for potentially some lepers this morning. One of the other vehicles has already headed out to look for the lions that were seen last night on Kruger Later sightings. Uh, Ross and Peter on their way there to follow up any tracks and maybe they were lucky last night. Yeah, and the sun is coming quite majestically through your beard there. What have you got there, Leon? So we have a set of leopard tracks here. There's two distinct tracks. There's one over there and one over here. Heading down the road this morning and we're going to go see if we can follow up on them. From camp we saw this whole wake of vultures start to descend. We went quickly to follow up and see what was going on and found them feeding on this impala. There's no indication of what killed the impala but the whole carcass seems relatively intact. So it's possible that the impala actually died from injuries in a fight with another. So with this many vultures descending in the air, it might also attract other predators, uh, lion, leopard, hyena, and want to come and see if there's a free meal going.
it, folks. Just a quick interlude, but you can see how we get some of the B-roll footage that we use to fill in. Uh, this is also a new crocodile fishing technique that Yaku has developed here. Right folks, good afternoon. We were on our mission to go and film the bee eaters and we got quite sidetracked because we were driving along the Manuleti River and Gareth happened to just spot a leopard walking over the rocks. Um, he's in quite an inaccessible place for us to drive down and get more closer so we're just watching him at the moment but I think we're going to leave him be and make our way to the bee eaters and see if we can capture some good stuff. You. Good. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't that was have good. said good stuff. <laughs> Don't say more closer either. It's interesting how that buffalo knows the difference between the leopard not a danger versus a lion a huge danger. Mel, well, what are these two doing? Well, Mark, they're trying to attach the 360 camera to a route that's hanging down the cliff face um, in order to capture the bee-eater footage that was requested. So, using some duct tape, a route from a plant, and hopefully it should work.
So finally, off to the bee eaters nesting site. Bee eaters like to build their nests in the banks of rivers, quite high up off of the ground. And this is to keep their eggs and chicks safe from animals such as the Nile monitor seen earlier in this video. This is the white fronted bee eater. One of 19 species of bee eaters we get in Africa, and one of 27 species in the world. There are six species of bee eaters that occur in Kruger National Park, and of these six, there are two that do not migrate. This is one of them. Bee eaters are monogamous. They pair for life. And we look at this one cleaning its feathers. Having a scratch. Cleaning his bull. Watch how machine like this bee eater's head is, how it follows all these other bee eaters that are flying around it. It actually aims with its bill, and that's how it catches insects in flight. Each breeding pair will dig a nest out of a riverbank wall, which is about a meter in depth, and they'll do this every single year. And although bee eaters are monogamous, they are cooperative breeders, which means that they help each other raise their young. And that's probably one of the reasons why they live in a colony like this. Now, if you have a look at all of those nests in that riverbank, and bear in mind that they do build these nests, or new nests, every single year, that actually compromises the physical structure of that riverbank. And it makes it vulnerable to erosion. You have a look at how those beaters are hanging onto the edge of that near vertical cliff. They actually have specialized feet as well as strengthened tail feathers, which allows them to do that. They actually push the feathers against the wall and then hang on with the claws of their feet. Bee eaters are sit and wait predators. They find a perch, which is clear of any leaves, and then they wait and watch for insects to fly by. When they do see an insect fly by, they then quickly fly off of the perch grab it out of mid-air and then return to the perch where they might knock it on the branch a few times in the case of a wasp or a bee or something that might sting to try and get all the poison out and then they'll swallow it. This style of hunting is called hawking. Its genus name is Merops which is Greek for eater of bees, very conveniently. These birds have evolved to catch insects on the wing. And out of all the birds that do this, they are probably the most efficient at it. You can see how incredibly aerobatic they are. Forming tight twists and turns when need be. These birds have to keep their feathers in tip-top shape in order to fly so swiftly. That black eye stripe is one of the features that all bee eaters share, as well as a recurve 
Blackpool. Yeah, I think so. This is one of only two bee eaters that breed in Kruger. They have slightly shorter wings than the rest of the migrants. These bee eaters do not migrate, nor do the little bee eaters. Right, Mel, so tell us about this afternoon. Well, we've had a very unexpected but absolutely phenomenal afternoon here on Mala Mala Game Reserve. Oh, sometimes the bush just leaves you speechless and it's been one of those afternoons. We spent some wonderful amount of time with the leopard and I think we got some really fantastic footage of the bee eaters currently just retrieving the 360 camera that we set up. So. I'm sure we've got some great stuff.